So we are going to start with a cauliflower gratin. Now I just uh, pre-chopped up some cauliflower into florets. And this is local New York State cauliflower, so that's exciting, all organic. And uh, just one head for that. I'm also, I have about uh, three cups of cremini mushrooms, which are similar to uh, like a smaller version of a portobello. Sometimes they're called baby bellas. Yeah. Uh, so you can use those. Or you could use whatever mushrooms you like, whether it's shiitake mushrooms or oyster mushrooms. You could use portobellos if you want, but the portobello mushrooms will change the color of the dish a little bit just because they tend to release kind of like a dark, almost like a caramelly sort of color. Here I just have some cauliflower and mushrooms just mixed up, thinly sliced, and we're going to work. Hi. We're going to work on our sauce right now. Now what we're going to do, uh, the sauce that we're making is going to be kind of like a like a white sauce, like a gravy sort of thing. We're going to put some fresh leeks in there. Now the leek, I mean it looks, honestly, it looks like a massive scallion, doesn't it? And honestly that's what it tastes like. It's really, really hearty. It's got such a great oniony flavor. Not too, too strong, just right, okay? So we are going to use that and it's just going to add such a nice flavor to the dish and when they cook down they really get kind of sweet so that's going to be a really nice complement to the um, mushrooms and the cauliflower. Okay. All I'm going to do is just thinly slice them, okay? Now you don't have to get too crazy about this because they are going to cook down but since we've already kind of pre-sliced it, they're, it's going to you know make it a lot easier, easier for you to chop. Okay, just slice Slice away, don't get your finger. Don't, you do not want that. Now we've got our leeks, all right? Now to this, I'm going to add some really nice, interesting components, okay? So that's gonna really take care of our oniony sort of flavor. I'm also going to add coconut milk. Now coconut milk is such a great replacement for heavy cream because it's got a higher fat content so it's really nice, it coats your palate, it's got a, it, you know, it does have a little bit of a light coconutty flavor, but I really love that. I think it really lends itself well to savory dishes. So we are going to use this. Um, you can also alternatively use um, almond milk if you prefer. You could use soy milk. You, now it's really important to shake up your can of coconut milk because what happens with coconut milk is the solids tend to separate from the liquid, which is the coconut water. So it's, it's, the fat is essentially separated from the water, okay? That it does become liquid at room temperature. So you just kind of give it a nice good shake and then you'll see as I pour it, it's a beautiful, milk. milky, creamy consistency, okay? Now, this is a special ingredient. Um, you can opt against this if you wish. I love it. This is Daya cheese. Uh, this is a mozzarella version. Basically what it is, it really gives a nice, creamy, savory flavor to the dish. All right? So we're going to add this in. What is it at? It's actually made out of uh, pea protein and tapioca starch. So it's soy free, which is really nice. Obviously vegan, um, which is extra nice. <laughs> but, uh, I'm also going to add some tapioca starch. Now that's going to be the thickener. If you'd like, you can absolutely use cornstarch. Uh, you can also that's use arrowroot if you wish to nice save a little bit of the coconut milk and whisk in the tapioca starch because what happens if it does get clumpy, those clumps don't disintegrate. They get like a ball of gel. So what you do um, is you take a little bit of the coconut milk, maybe half the can, and you're going to stir in your, uh, your you know, tapioca starch or arrowroot or whatever it is. And you just get it really nice and incorporated and that's called a slurry. <laughs> you can put it right in front of the camera. <laughs> um, so that you make a little bit of a slurry out of this, okay? So that's great. And then you just pour it right in. But since we didn't do that, huh, it's funny you should ask. Mm -hmm. A couple tablespoons. That's my answer for everything. A couple tablespoons. All right, so we're just gonna really fully incorporate it here. Now if this looks like, oh, okay, you know, maybe it looks really thick right now, it doesn't really look like it's gonna coat the, uh, the cauliflower, it does, okay? If you wish to get it a little bit more of a soupy 
sort of consistency, you can absolutely add a little bit more water. You can add some veggie stock to this if you want. So I'm just mixing all of these things all together, okay? So the starch is gonna kind of dissolve in with the coconut milk. I'm also going to add a little bit of salt because you have to have some salt. Just a little bit, all right? Just to season it to your liking, okay? Also some uh, freshly ground black pepper. We've got our pepper in, we're just gonna incorporate that. Now I'm also going to add a little bit of Dijon mustard. It's gonna give it a nice tanginess, which we love. Love the tanginess. It's gonna offset all the veggies really nicely. Now, I'm gonna kind of keep this a little simple tonight because we're also gonna do some uh, breadcrumbs. Let me get them out of the oven as we see. And you can use whole grain mustard and it really adds a nice little uh, flavor and a nice bite. Would horseradish mustard be too much? No, I don't think so. I think that would add a really nice kick of flavor and spice too. Um, also at this point, you can add in some fresh herbs, some rosemary, some thyme, basil if you like. Um, I, or parsley, flat leaf parsley has a lot of flavor, so that you can add in as well. All right, so now this is all incorporated. And what's gonna happen with the vegetables, especially the mushrooms, is that with the salts that we've added, it's going to release some uh, liquid from the mushroom, okay? So that's good, we want that, because it's gonna make a really nice sauce, all right? So now I'm going to mix it all together with the mushrooms, okay? and the cauliflower. Yum, how good does that look? Who could eat that just like that? I know, seriously. Yeah, a nice fresh salad, although I don't recommend it because the starch might make it a little gritty and the diet isn't really all that delicious when it's not melted. I mean, it's delicious, but you know, it's, it's, it's something special when it's melted, so. So wait, although you can take a little nibble just to test for seasoning, which of course I'm, you know I'm gonna do. Alright, and you can use a casserole dish, a Pyrex dish, glass, you know, whatever you got. Stainless steel, it really doesn't matter. You can use an enamel, like a, uh, a Le Creuset, like a Dutch oven sort of thing. Just get it in there. So in the meantime, we are, we are going to make our own breadcrumbs today. Um, with the bread I put under there, I didn't forget. Amazing. Alright, so this is going to set aside. Now, if you do not want to use breadcrumbs, you do not have to, okay? Give me some salt. Okay. But you could do pretzels, apparently. You could even do, you know, um, as I look at these ground up almonds, you could even do a little bit of a, like a nut crust on top, which will add a really nice savory flavor and really crunchy too. All right, all right. So I just have a couple pieces that I've toasted. Now you could leave them out overnight if you want to, get them nice and stale. But this bread, I find, is really good when you heat it, okay? It's better than when you leave it out stale because it kind of gets a little funky. Being that it is gluten-free, uh, it's delicious. I eat it all the time. But I just recommend toasting it, and it's a lot faster, too. All right, so we're just kind of doing a crumble here just to help out the food processor. If you've got some crazy industrial, you know, food processor, I definitely... Uh, you don't need to even do this trick, but actually this kitchen one is pretty, pretty dynamite here. All right, so I'm gonna just let you in on my secret, another one of my secrets. I do it all the time, I'll tell ya. No, but it's a fabulous one. Um, so in making breadcrumbs, obviously we need to pulverize this, right? But we really want it to develop a nice golden brown crust on the uh, cauliflower here. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit of olive oil and garlic to the breadcrumbs, okay? And that's really going to make the, the olive oil that's surrounding the bread is really going to make it nice and golden brown and crispy. So before we do anything, actually that's not true, I am going to add one clove of garlic, okay? Just to kind of... Hello. That's what I always do. I always forget this little thing. Okay. So a little garlic. And we're going to uh, start. Okay? Ready for loud stuff? Alright. So it's going to take a couple of Is that going to be fast in the Vitamix? 
Yeah, you could do this in the Vitamix, sure. You just don't want to pulverize it too much that it like loses its... You don't want to make dust, you want to Exactly. <laughs> it's a little scary, but a little exciting. <laughs> and it's working. Alright, so now at around this point, I'm going to put in a little bit of olive oil. coming together, you'll you'll kind of see that, all right. So now we're going to just sprinkle this right over. If you weren't here, I would be using my hands. I just want to confess. I mean, look at that. That looks amazing, doesn't it? Yeah. But put it in the, put it in the uh, oven. I promise you it will be even better. Okay. And the garlic just flavors it ever so slightly. It's quite lush. If you wanted to add any, you know, um, spices to the breadcrumbs, you totally could. I mean, I didn't add it tonight just because I didn't add it. I know. It feels so good, right? Uh, put some parsley in there. Parsley would be the herb I recommend. Flat meat. And, you know, probably a quarter cup. All right. So, now that that's all sprinkled, it's going to go in the oven and then we get to eat it soon. Yay! That's exciting, right? Yeah. I'm sorry? 350 oven? Yeah, 350 is good. Okay, so this is going in the oven. In the middle of the oven. All right. So, I'm sorry? Uh, I would say about 20 to 25 minutes. I'm going to put my timer on 20 minutes so I do not forget. Here is our tempeh. Okay, now again, tempeh, tempeh is a fermented soy product, okay? It's delicious. Is that the main kind of use? Like I do. Three grain and a I don't like use the three grain um, just because I find sometimes it falls apart. So I just use the straight up soy. It's straight soy. But if you wanted to, you know, there, there are different varieties in this brand. Um, and I'll pass this around once I have it out of its package. Um, it's really, really good for you. I mean, this, a lot of people have a hard time digesting soy products. The nature of it, uh, the fact that it is fermented, makes it a lot easier to digest, okay? But if you do have an allergy, obviously avoid it. So basically, it looks like a brick, okay? It looks like a, a fermented soy brick, and that's really what it is. Um, it's great on its own. Sometimes I chop it into chunks, throw it in with a saute with different vegetables and stuff like that. But in this in this scenario, we are going to dredge it, which kind of gives it a little bit more of a texture. We're going to put some almonds on it. Uh, but before we do any of that, I'm going to cook it a little bit. Sometimes it can be a little bit bitter if you don't cook it, all right? So I'm going to marinate it, and I've got a little bit of either you can use tamari, soy sauce, I used Bragg's amino acid, okay, because it's great, I mean, especially as a vegan, I like to give as much nutrition to my body as humanly possible, and this stuff is delicious. Like, so now I'm going to flavor up my broth, because every single, and, okay, so I did the uh, one part Bragg's amino acid to about four or five parts water, okay? Otherwise, the, um, the you know, amino acid spray or the tamari will really overpower. Okay, okay, taste your food. That's all what it comes down to. All right, so I have ginger here. This is just a little knob of ginger. So it's gonna give it kind of a little Asian-y sort of flavor. I wash it and I put the skin in. Oh, you did. This is progressive thinking right here. I know. Okay, so just a little bit in there. So you saw about the size of my knob. It's about two inches or so. Salty. Thinly sliced right in. Okay? And as this brings up to a boil, it'll start to really, the flavors will seep out and it'll be delicious. Okay? Yeah, we'll just put the whole thing in. May as well. Alright, so that's in. I'm also going to put a little garlic. 
You can put garlic, you can leave it out, you can put onion if you want. I have three cloves here. So all I'm going to do is just slice that wonderfully cheap garlic. <laughs> I mean, you think about it, like a, a little, uh, like a head of garlic is like 70 cents, not even. It's super cheap anyway. Alright, so we've got that all in there. We don't think they're frozen. Sounds good to me. Alright, so what I did here was I thinly sliced the tempeh. I made a first initial cut right in the middle. That is how we were taught to do it in culinary school, so of course that is how forever I will be cutting my um, tempeh. Basically what what's the deal here is that you can cut it straight, but doing this it really gives a lot of surface area that's exposed, okay? All right, so I'm going to put it in boiling water so there's no, you know, don't worry about my hands being all up. You know. All right. So I just slice it, you know, thinly on the bias for our fancy culinary Lydia, Lydia the Italian cook, she yeah. never puts on gloves. I know, I know. She I do. She puts the gloves on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everything's no. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And never well, makes how I cook. Never These are your best tools right yeah. here. Yeah, that's how I cook. So there you go. Yeah, so why not? <laughs> right? All right, so I'm just going to let this simmer for a couple of minutes here just to get all those delicious flavors all incorporated into the tempeh. Now in a separate bowl here, I've got some water and ground flaxseed, okay? For any of you that are familiar with vegan baking, flaxseeds are a great egg alternative, okay? That does not, so it doesn't stop just through baking, okay? So we're literally, like this is an, I call it a flax egg wash because it does the exact same thing. It's really like goopy. It almost looks like like a beaten egg. You know what I mean? So that's really the consistency that we want. Okay? And what we're gonna do is after this is done cooking, we're gonna go in there and then we're gonna go in there. But that's not yet. Alright? What just, is that again? That's ground up This is just raw almonds. You can buy roasted almonds. I like to use raw because we are still going to cook it after this. So I just, you know, I like to have them really nice and, you know, pulverized. Like a ground almond meal that's yeah, you can use that, absolutely. I like to do them myself for freshness reasons as well. Also, I find that once, if they're still kept in, you know, they're kept whole, uh, they do maintain a lot of flavor. Uh, also, I like to have a little bit of chunkiness in them, you know? All right, so what I'm going to do is um, on to a new dish as this is kind of cooking a little bit. We are going to make uh, pureed greens. So what I'm going to do is take an onion about this size, okay? And I'm just going to dice it up. rough chop. You don't need to sit there and spend your whole day, you know, slicing the onion perfectly into little dices, you know, into little tiny squares. It's just, just quick and dirty, you know? All right, so, this is not how I would have taught you to chop an onion in the knife skills class. I'll do it that way, too. All right. So, I mean, you saw that. Seconds. It's fine. Let it go. All right. Now we're going to add a little bit of olive oil into the bottom of our um, saute pan here, and I use a larger one just because we're going to be adding a lot of greens. And at first, they're going to be super bulky. It's going to be piled up to here. Maybe not. Yeah, exactly. And then it cooks down to nothing. All right. I don't need that much oil because this is a nonstick pot. So that's the tempeh is. The consistency of the tempeh is going to stay the same the entire time through, okay? What it's doing is just basically marinating it, okay? And because it's hot, it's going to cook a lot faster. If we were to do this, you could absolutely do this and not apply heat, but I would recommend letting the tempeh sit a little bit longer, maybe like, you know, an hour or two. But if, you know, if you got the time, do it. But if not, I would definitely recommend just throwing it all in there. It's also nice because, um, well, I mean, it also cooks the garlic and the ginger and all the. Alright, so I'm gonna pull this over just because it's a little bit faster. Alright? In the box, just like that. 
Alright, so what I always do, this is my rule of thumb, is when you're going to saute onions, always add a little bit of salt. Okay? The salt is just going to draw out the moisture and make it really, really delicious. Alright? And you only need a little bit, because we're going to season this at the end of our cooking time. Alright. So the onion is in there. Now last night for my um, Mocktoberfest at my pop-up dinner, I actually put some caraway seeds in this because that's kind of a, a traditional sort of German flavor. So that was really, really good. So I do recommend if you want to kind of spice it up a little bit, literally, um, add some, you know, some caraway seeds, you do fennel seeds, celery seeds. Anything like that, cumin. You know, you could do like a, uh, like a curried sort of version with this, with cumin and ginger. I mean, you could really. This is a versatile recipe. Now I'm gonna chop up some garlic because I feel like garlic and greens just go so well together. So now that the uh, the onions are kind of sweated out, don't sweat it. <laughs> I like to talk to my food. Kind of this thing. All right, so I have a couple of cloves of garlic, just sliced. Again, do not go crazy because this is going to be pureed. So don't worry if they're, you know, not beautiful. You can even put them in whole if you wanted to. No problem, anything goes. Okay, so now that that's all in, I'm going to add my green. Now, over here, I've got kale, okay? Yeah, I know. So you can use whatever greens you like. We've got our gorgeous kale here. I'm also going to add some spinach. You could do Swiss chard if you want. Why not? You could do collard greens. Why not? You could do lettuce. Why not? Right? Seriously. Keep it exciting. Just a roughly chop. I, I took the stems off. Now, actually, these aren't really even roughly chopped. I'm just going to break them apart, so you can just do one of those, throw them in. Now, I'm going to put the kale in first, and then I'm going to put the spinach in second, because the kale is going to cook a little bit longer than the spinach. I mean, once you put the spinach in there, it's like two seconds and it's done. So this is just one bunch. Um, I do recommend buying the green kale. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Um, I do recommend buying the green kale only because of the color, because you know you want it to be really nice and vibrant green. You know the the red kale kind of makes it a little muddy. So I also have some baby spinach here. This is just a box, or you could buy a bag. If you have spinach growing in your garden, you can use that. I mean, hello. That's, that's of course, the best alternative. All right, so at this point, I'm also going to add a little bit of liquid, okay? I'm going to add some water. You could add vegetable stock. You could add chicken stock. Anything you want. But the water does just fine. Because we are going to season this, and with the, you know, with the onions and the garlic, it's going to be great. You could use white wine if you want. Why not? <laughs> Alright, and that really helps steam it. How much water do you just put into that a cup? Oh, a little bit less than a cup. Yeah, I'd say probably a half a cup-ish. A quarter to a half. Alright? Alright, so now for a second, literally a minute, I'm going to just put the top on and let it steam. Magic is going to happen under the tent. Turn down the heat a little bit. You don't need it too, too hot. Just enough to see it. Woo, hello. Look at that color. Is that not gorgeous? I mean, you could just eat these just like this. Yeah. I would, I also do recommend adding a little bit of red pepper flakes just for a little bit of a spice. But since we're gonna make something with this right here, my favorite of all time, we don't need the spice in the greens as well. Although if it were just me at home, I would put the spice everywhere. Alright, so this is um, the spinach just going right in. Now it's so amazing because it looks like so much spinach, but then it wilts down to like this much spinach, so. Alright. Alright, now we're just 
gonna put, I'm gonna turn the heat off, okay? Do a little more. in the freezer and then you, you know. That's pretty good. Alright. So, on to our tempeh again. We're gonna switch. Alright. Alright, so normally I would suggest letting this cool down just a little bit because it is gonna be really hot. Uh, but since, you know, we don't have anything pre-made, we're just gonna go up, we're just gonna go for it. Alright? And I'm just taking the tempeh out. And you saw I was like 10 minutes in there. And I'm gonna put it straight, after I give it a little whisk, I'm gonna put it straight into my flaxseed mixture. Alright? And the flax again is going to act like eggs, and it's gonna really bind everything up and act like a glue for this for these almonds. It's gonna be really nice. Are the flaxseed yes. water about half half? No. The flaxseed are very potent. So I say about three tablespoons of flaxseed. That burner is very hot. <laughs> three tablespoons of flaxseed to about maybe two, two and a half cups of water. Wow. Give it a good whisk. Yeah, it's amazing. And literally, I mean, that's, that's what you get. You get a really super thick consistency. Alright, so I'm going to put these right in here, okay, just like... When you make the flax seeds mixture, yes. do you grind up the flax seeds first like yes. you food process Yes, you absolutely do. So they're ground flax seeds. You can purchase them uh, ground, oh. for sure, but you can also, if you want, you can... Um, I buy them in bulk. They're super cheap to buy in bulk. I buy a container this big for like $1.50. And then I grind them myself. I take my Vitamix or a blender of some sort or a coffee grinder. Yeah, that works well. Better. A coffee grinder is great. And then I just grind a whole bunch of them and then I stick them in the fridge. There you go. You got ground flaxseed and it's so much cheaper. Almond butter. Um, you could use cashew butter I'm if you want. Or I so also recommend um, you can use silken tofu. It'll do the same thing. But it really gives it a nice creamy flavor. And... Uh, <coughs> consistency as well. Probably half a cup, quarter quarter to a half, <laughs> all right? So it's all nice. You want to put it in while it's still hot, just because it kind of like works its way in there, really coats the greens, but it makes it super, super creamy. Uh, yeah. So now we've got our uh, tempeh, and it's, it's slightly cold to the touch, so that's good. All right, now I always do it so one hand is for the crumbs, one hand is for the yucky stuff, right? Which I, of course, broke the rule already. <laughs> Shocker. This is nothing new to me, you know? All right. Okay. It just makes things a little bit nicer, you know? You could season up this flaxseed if you want. You could add a little bit of tamari or brags to this, add a little salt, whatever. All right. So uh, I put them in. Oh, just a couple at a time. I don't want to overwhelm the pan here. And then with our clean hand, I just sprinkle a little bit of the almonds right over. Do a little flip, kind of pat it down a bit, right? And I find that this does really well if you let it sit for a minute, okay? So that's what your what your end result is going to be, all right? And it's, so we're just dredging away, okay? But yeah, you could definitely use almond meal for this. There you go, see? That's good stuff, okay. All right, you can use other nuts. You don't have to use almonds, you can use hazelnuts. In fact, in my restaurant in California, absolutely, my California, my restaurant in California, I uh, put this dish on the menu with hazelnuts and almonds, and it was delicious. Delicious. I did mix, yeah, yep. But you could do pistachios, you could do walnuts, you know? You could do macadamia nuts. Why not? You are so you, creative. You could even do pumpkin seeds. Whoa. <laughs> now we're getting fancy. So, you know, basic fundamentals here. And then once you kind of get the swing of it, you, you know, you got the creativity too. You really do. So um, at this point, you can really do one of two things. You could do both, actually. Uh, I'm going to do a little pan fry on the, the cooktop here. You could also bake it in the oven, just like this. I really like to do the quick pan fry, just because it gives the almonds a really nice chance to toast up. All right? 
you were to pay for, would you do like 375? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Totally. Yeah. 375 would be a perfect temperature for this. And just on a, you know, a generously oiled sheet tray, just because you do want to need a little oil. Alright, so now that our oil is all nice and heated, somewhat coated on the pan, oh, I did it. I did it! Alright, alright. We're going to put these on. And of course, this is off, so that's helpful. Would that work with other rest, with other vegetables like cauliflower? I'm sorry. Would that work with other vegetables? Yeah, like cauliflower? you could do or that. Eggplant. Yeah, eggplant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. zucchini. Yeah. Totally. Would be good. Yeah, for sure. One thing I find with zucchini, it's a little tough because as it cooks, it shrinks. So you get left with this like kind no. of weird no. shell. It could be okay. I mean, it's fine. Uh, but that would be my only. But yeah, definitely eggplant is hard. Cool. And now we're going to uh, puree our greens and take out this cauliflower delicacy. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. I don't know who's eating, but I'm leaving with this. Alright, I'm going to season with a little bit more salt. And just a bit of pepper. Alright. The pepper is just a nice little accent, and I use the multicolored peppercorns because they all have different flavors, each peppercorn. Like the pink peppercorns are kind of like a fruity sort of flavor, and then the green peppercorns have a little bit more of a spicy flavor. It's great. Now what's looking? Ooh, hello. Flying onions all around. No problem. Just make yeah, sure you're... cook if there's not something on your wall. I know, right? Seriously. I kind of... Yeah, so your audience. I don't know if you know what it is. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the operative right there. Alright, top of processor. Check. Alright. Yes! Look at him go. That's what you should have. no rubber spatula, but I do uh, recommend just kind of pushing it down a little bit, just kind of getting everything all nice and incorporated. I'm also now going to turn it up to high. Alright, so now we're going to make our sriracha aioli. I know, it sounds really fancy, but it's like five ingredients. Okay, so silk and tofu is where we're at in life, okay, because that is going to make it delicious and creamy and it's going to replace the eggs and, the, you know, all the stuff that you would typically have in an aioli. In an aioli. Aioli. In an aioli. Say that five times fast. That's silky? Yeah, so this is silken tofu, yes. Now, there are different um, types of silken tofu, <clears throat> believe it or not. There is a light, there's a firm, there's an extra firm. <clears throat> Excuse me. I always say go with the... Uh, the firmest variety that you can, okay? So this one is just a regular, you know, like a firm silken tofu. So does uh, Restaurant Depot? Because everybody's just rushing out to Restaurant Depot. Restaurant Depot? Restaurant Depot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, way out there. This is a kitchen store or something yep. on 23. So just a couple of shakes of this. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, you know, then they can't sell them. Oh, no, this yeah. one lost in almonds. Okay. All right, so that's just going to crisp up a little bit. And actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick it into the oven just like this. All right? Hello, people. So that's pretty easy, right? Just put that little almond back on this guy. Okay. Um, just a couple minutes. All you, you're just basically heating it all the way through, you know what I mean? So, all right. So we've got our greens, we've got our cauliflower, our sriracha aioli. All right, so I've got silken tofu in here. I'm gonna do a clove of garlic. Where is my garlic? All right, just one clove, because you don't want it to be too overpowering because the sriracha itself has a lot of garlic in it, so just a little guy in there. How much? Half a shake. Ah, a couple shakes. Yeah, and this is gonna be pretty spicy. It's a secret recipe. <laughs> no, this is not. What is that? Maple syrup. Mm. All right, a little bit of maple syrup just to sweeten it up a touch. Yeah, that's that was big. Right yeah. Fancy stuff here. I tell ya. All right, now some Dijon mustard to give it a little tartness. All right, a couple 
tablespoons. My go-to response for everything. A couple tablespoons of that, and that, and that. When in doubt. <laughs> yeah, when in doubt, a couple tablespoons, for sure. Okay, all right, so yeah, I'm just using pure maple syrup. Yeah, you. I mean, if you're not vegan, you could use honey as an alternative. Uh, but vegans do not eat honey, so. Well, some do, actually. I don't. All right, some pepper. What about agave? Agave you could use, for sure. You could even use sugar if you got it. All right. So this is just kind of like a kicked up version of the sauce that we already have. Like, we're just kind of stretching it out a little bit, making it a little delicious, a little more delicious. All right, so start off low.